Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would do a video on pre-PA myths that are out there because there are a lot of information and misinformation, you know, floating around the internet um, or, you know, advice or all these things that people hear um, that they need to get do these certain things or get this certain major or whatever, you know, it may be that just is simply not true. This is also hopefully to dispel some like rumors or like myths that of you know of getting into PA school because sometimes we hear these things and it's really scary and it deters people from wanting to go into you know pre PA or their like medicine in general. Um, so hopefully this can dispel some of those fears. And mind you, a lot of these have been said before, um, and other people have said that you know these aren't true and other you know this isn't new information. Um, this is kind of a collection of them to hopefully help other pre PA students out. So the first one is a big one that people ask when they're first starting in their pre-PA journey and that is the myth is that you have to be a biology or science major to get into PA school and that is simply not true. Um, although it may be helpful, you know, and able to do more of the science classes since your major already includes them, um, it might be easier for you to graduate on time, but you can be any major you want and still get into PA school as long as you have the required prereqs, the hours, you know, and all of your CASPA application is complete. So if you have a big passion for like political science, I don't know, anything outside of science and you want to do that and then maybe get your minor in a science or just get your prereqs done at a community college, that is okay. Most PA schools will accept community college classes. So moral of the story, follow your dreams, follow your heart, do whatever you want in college because that's a time where you're, you're like, although you are preparing for your pre-PA stuff, you're still having fun, you're still meeting friends, you're being social. So enjoy the time that you're there. Don't pick biology just because people said it's helpful or it's, you know, the major to choose. Pick something that you'll genuinely enjoy learning and then your time in undergrad will be better and hopefully, you know, if you're enjoying what you're actually learning, then you'll perform better in your classes. The next one is that you need to have like a 4.0 to get into PA school and that is just not true. Um, there are some schools that are notorious for being more picky with GPA, you know, sometimes they have cutoffs at like 3.7 or something like that. Um, but most PA schools look at you more holistically. Since PA schools require hours and so many other things, they usually tend to look at your GPA, but also your hours, your volunteering, your personal statement, your letters of rec, they really take all of that into account. So you do not need to have a perfect 4.0 GPA to get in to school. Some schools even look at your last like 45 or 60 unit GPA. Um, so if you like did not so hot at the beginning of college and then you found you know how to study and everything and your GPA trended upwards, um, then a lot of schools actually look at that and see how you were as like a recent student versus when you were first starting your college courses um, because there's like a huge change obviously from your first year to even your second year in college in terms of you know handling yourself socially, knowing how to balance social life and you know school and all of that. Um, so some schools do look at your upward trend so if that's something that you have a good upward trend and maybe your cumulative is not as great, I would start looking at schools that are known to look at the last 45 or last 60. The next myth is that you need like 4,000 and plus hours to get into school. And I can tell you that's not true because I have personal experience where I had less than 2,000 and I did get in. Um, the school I got into requires 1,000. There are schools that require 2,000, so obviously I wouldn't be able to apply there. Um, but it's not true. If you, like I said, they look at your application holistically. So I had a decent GPA, so that kind of helped weight out my lower patient care experience, you know, in terms of like the national average is what, like four, about 4,000 or more. Um, so I had less than like the average. Um, but I think my GPA helped balance that in my volunteering experiences. So again, if you don't have that many hours but your GPA is good or you have really good volunteering or like leadership experiences, they look at your application holistically. Like I said, my I had about 1,600 hours, give or take, and the program average from my school that I'm going to, um, like MBKU, their last year's program average was like over 9,000 hours. Um, so the lowest was I think like 1300 and the highest was like 10,000 or something, you know, ridiculous. I think it was like 15,000, something really high. Um, so that like threw the average up, but the lowest was 1300 and I only had 1600. So 300 more is not too much. Um, so I definitely feel like they probably looked at other aspects of my application when considering me. This one is annoying. Um, PA school is easier or more difficult to get into than med school. 
and it's just it's different it's much different than med school um some people are saying it's harder to get into statistics there's less programs and more people trying to apply and that's probably very true um and then some people are saying pa school is easier to get into because it's only two years so you, you don't need that much you know your gpa doesn't need to, be, need to be as high or you don't you know need all these things that med school requires like research um but pa school requires hours that med school doesn't so you know it's Honestly, I can't say, me, I don't think it's easier or more difficult. I think it's just very different and the process is very different. Um, Pre-PA students focus on getting those hours and sometimes that can affect the GPA. Or you, There's so many things that are just different. If you're doing research for med school, you usually don't do that for PA school. So don't go into the PA profession because it's easier to get into school because it's really not. The average is like 30% of people that apply get accepted. Don't quote me on the statistic, but it's it's something similar to that. So it's there are a lot of people that want to get into PA school, so it is very competitive. Um, but it's just, it's just different than med school. So I wouldn't, it's hard to compare the two. So the next one is that all of your patient care experience needs to be paid and with the exception of a few schools like I know Loma Linda requires paid hours and there's a few more sprinkled there but majority of them will accept volunteering hours. A lot of them prefer paid hours because that usually means you have more responsibility and you have more of liability and you're usually connected to more healthcare professionals if you're actually hired somewhere um, but most schools will accept volunteer patient care experience. So about 500 of my 1600 hours were actually volunteering at the physical therapy aid um, clinic on my campus and also with the muscular dystrophy, the summer camp. So I would definitely try to at some point get some form of paid patient care experience, um, but volunteering is a much easier way usually to get started because it's, you know, slower. So if you are you know, still in school, you can usually volunteer maybe once or twice a week and kind of dip your foot, feet into it uh, versus plunging into a job full time because that's a big commitment. Usually people who want to start with patient care are still an undergrad. So volunteering is a good way to start and usually those hours still count even if it was just a couple times a week volunteering at like a hospital or something. As long as you're actually physically touching patients and the school that you are applying to, you know, counts that as hours, then that's a great way to start. This next one is super frustrating because like I've done it myself so I know why people do it but the myth is that looking at other people's stats or asking other people to rate your stats will help you gauge uh, how you're, if you're going to get into PA school and that's just really not true. At the end of the day you do not know what the admissions committee is looking for. You may have like exactly the statistic like the statistics of accepted students at that school but maybe you just don't vibe with vibe with the class that they're like having to put together or maybe there's like a certain experience that they were looking for and it's not that you're not a good applicant it's just maybe you're not right for that school um, but that's why looking at other people's statistics it's mostly people focus on GPA and there's just so much more to the application than that and then the, just the interview process like there's so many things that go into it that when you're asking somebody statistics that it just it's not a really good like a not accurate representation of if you're gonna get in don't get me wrong it's a really great idea to look into them like the stats if just to get a general idea of maybe accepted students that they do like they have usually like a class profile that says like you like the average accepted GPA or if you look at the past like application cycle on like the PA forum some people who got accepted will put their stats it's like not terrible to look at them just so you get a general idea of what they usually accept but you should not in any way compare your application to that because like I said most people just focus on the GPA and you know somebody with 3.3 may have gotten in and you may have like a 3.9 and you're not hearing back from anything but you don't know that they went on all these mission trips or did something like directly with a school or you know really stood out to them like volunteering or just extracurricular stuff um, so there's just so much more in the application so I wouldn't get super worked up about the stats that you see on the PA forum or on any other pre-PA page. So next one I've actually gotten a few questions on some people were asking me if they had a lower GPA that they should do a post back program because I've been told you know especially by a lot of I know a lot of my friends who were pre-med did post back programs to get to med school um, however PA school is so much different than med school because they accept community college classes usually. Um, I haven't heard of any schools that don't accept the community college classes but I would make sure to email your potential schools that you're going to apply to beforehand just to double check. But since PA 
these schools accept community college classes, it's a lot easier to just go to a community college and build up your GP there. The classes are usually cheaper. Um, they're oftentimes smaller, which doesn't mean a community college class is like doesn't equal easier, but sometimes there are less people there, which means more one-on-one -on -one attention or more, you know, tutoring from people. So community college is a great way to get your prereqs done and all of your other, you know, requirements done. Um, and I know some people have even done just like they did a different major that had no science courses and then did their prereqs completely out of CC and have gotten in and were just fine. And I have talked to many people um, or emailed people at different colleges like admissions reps and asked them if they looked down upon CC classes and I don't think I, I did not get one response that said that they looked down upon community college classes. Um, so it's definitely... It's a normal thing in PA school since a lot of people who go into PA school are career changers that they have to go back and take their prereqs at a community college. So since that happens quite frequently, it's a very accepted thing in the PA world, um, which is such a great thing for people in undergrad who have other things going on and maybe afterwards need to take a couple classes or want to take classes over summer to get prepared, you know, ahead of time. Um, but community college classes are a great way to finish your prereqs. All right, so the last one is that you should only apply to like continuing status schools in terms of, so there's probationary, provisional, and then continuing. Continuing is when they're fine. Um, and then, you know, they've been in, like they're compliant with RPA and all of that. And they're definitely accredited. So all of those types of like category those categories of schools they're all accredited so even if you apply to a school that's on probation as long as they're taking the steps to be you know um back in rpa is like on good terms they're still technically accredited so the people in that school will still become pas they'll still be able to graduate and take the pants don't be afraid to apply to a school that's like provisionary which provisionary is when the schools are starting out and they're just making sure you know they have to have their like first cohort go through and take the pants and see how that goes um so newer schools that are provisionary like you should not be afraid to apply to them um you should one thing you should do though is you should look at their like school record so if they have like for example mpku has an optometry school and a pharmacy school and they've been around for years and they're doing well so that shows that the college knows how to run a health professional school um, so if the school that you're interested in is provisionary and they're you know building their program now if they have other health programs that are doing fine and are accredited in their own respective category you know um, then more than likely their program will be okay um, so do not be hesitant to apply to provisionary schools um, for terms of probation like schools on probation those you should look more into um, you definitely still can apply two that I applied to are actually on probation um, but the RPA actually puts out like the um, reasons why they're on probation or like how many they like you know citations I got um, so the schools that I applied to only got like one citation and it was more administrative so it wasn't necessarily like the citation wasn't you know anything against what they were teaching the, like the students or their pants rate or anything like that like it wasn't that their program wasn't adequately preparing their students it was something more with administration and like paperwork type of stuff um, so since I knew it wasn't like I, I didn't feel like if I went there I would lack some information or I wouldn't be able to be a successful PA or pass the pants um, I still applied there so I would just look into why the school is on probation you can even contact the like admissions director of somebody from the school and they're usually more than willing to kind of let you know what's going on and why they're under like on probation and what steps they're taking to fix it and if you feel comfortable and you feel like it's not something that's super detrimental to the students and your potential you know time there as a PA student if you end up going there um, then I would go ahead and apply but like I said just do your research as to why they're on probation or how they're doing on provisional like if they're keeping up with the things that RPA is requiring of them um, and just you can contact them don't be afraid to email the admissions director email like a program director or somebody and ask them like what's going on with their program um, because you know although it is competitive to get in in schools you know pick you you also are picking your school and you want to make sure you put your time and money into a school that you can see yourself being successful at Alright, so those are just some of like the 
basic pre-PA myths. There are so many more that float around on the internet. I see people asking questions, freaking out about, you know, things, you know, about PA school that they've heard from other people that just really aren't true. Don't listen to everything you hear on the internet. Don't listen to everything everyone tells you. I know I give advice, but definitely look at other people's advice too. They had different experiences with things, so maybe their take on something is much different than mine. Um, so just be aware when you're going into this, you know, whole pre-PA journey and applying um, about other people's biases and stuff like that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.